and someone says, well, they still have their annual banquet. We tiptoe in on Broadway. You go up there, have some chicken and green peas and chicken soup. That sounds good to me. So I went to the Tiptoe Inn that year, 1963. I felt a little awkward because here I was, a square-looking fellow wearing a suit and a tie with a briefcase, looking like any other FBI agent, perhaps. How will they trust me? Would they talk to me? Now, these were militants, revolutionaries. What sort of people are there? And I entered this room where they were making speeches and there were songs and they saw me come in. And I was absolutely enthralled by these people. And 15 years later, my opinion hasn't changed. Not one whit. I'm a man of peace, and that's why I'm an anarchist. It may sound very, very contradictory, but this is the fact. Anarchism is a peace movement. I think my ideas were all my life. It wasn't that I had to read about it, but I, I was naturally believing in freedom and not to impose and not to dictate anybody. Everybody was molding a little bit, the, the younger generation, and that's how we came with that. I was never a communist and I was never anything else but an anarchist. Oh, Alice Island, du Grenets von Freiland, du Dreusam wie Schrecklach du bist. Jews who had come out of Eastern Europe or who were still living in, in Europe were not only a religious group, but were a nation. And uh, they were treated as a nationality group with a lot of prejudice against them, but treated as a, as a nationality group. And uh, the Jews, like Frenchmen or Germans or Italians or Spaniards, uh, were, became anarchists, a certain number of them did, so that they were known as Jewish anarchists, just as there are Spanish anarchists or Italian anarchists, but not because they were religious anarchists. I come from a Hasidic family, and I was a believer in, in the Jewish religion, in the very strict Orthodox religion, but I had my doubts apparently since my early childhood, and when I uh, uh, finally freed myself of the religious dogma, I still remained a Jew, I still consider myself as a Jew, but a secular Jew, and uh, I consider myself an anarchist because I believe in the uh, attainability of a, a system of society without government. Anarchism in the 1880s and 1890s was probably the largest radical movement among the Jewish immigrants. These immigrants actually were upset by the world that confronted them when they arrived in the United States. They were disappointed. For some, of course, it's the legendary streets paved with gold, which they failed to find. I don't think any of the anarchist working men were anticipating anything like that. But they could not foresee the wrenching experience that they underwent from one world to the other. Oscar Handlin, the Harvard historian, wrote a famous book called The Uprooted. And they were uprooted from one land, one culture, one world, and cast into another world where conditions of labor were, if anything, worse than they had found and more rigorous and more demanding than they had been in the old country. And the sweatshops were no better than the factories in 
Lodz or Bialystok, for example, from which many of them had come. And they, they were revolted by the entire ethic of capitalism that they found here in the United States, in New York, in Baltimore, in Boston, Philadelphia, and other large cities where they tended to settle in addition to the Lower East Side. So what they did was to replace this world with a counter world, American culture with a counterculture, and they began to establish their whole anarchist culture, an anarchist milieu. On July the 4th, 1890, they started with the Freie Arbeitsstelle. The paper from its very inception was uh, a, an economic paper, an anarchist paper, spreading the ideas of a society without government, without coercion, without force, without wars. The, the immediate task of forming unions to help to relieve the economic situation of this sweatshop worker, and at the same time helping develop Yiddish culture, Yiddish theater, Yiddish poetry, Yiddish literature. And it went on like this till the end of 1977. After 87 and a half years, the Freie Arbeiterstimme had to cease publication. Now here is the guy that we were waiting for. So this is our secretary. Uh -huh. Let me introduce him first. Okay. Yeah. Why doesn't he come out? Come here. Because, you know, I we... I don't want to be a secretary. No, I'm a anarchist, you know. Like now, wait a minute. We are in hurry. They may shut off the electricity from now between 3 o'clock. They will. Yeah, anytime. So what okay. purposes are... He is the secretary of the management committee, managing yeah, committee of the Fire <laughs> Now, aside from this, he is a master, a retired master mariner. He helped us win the first, the Second World War by convoying help and material and ships to more mines. He also did another thing. He's got a cigarette. He, 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 no. He also, he also helped break, I mean, break through the British blockade uh, around Palestine and smuggle illegal immigrants, illegal immigrants to Israel. Now tell him. Palestine. There was no Israel there. There was Palestine. Well, actually, we're here filming the closing in the the prior arbiter stemma. So what, what we were talking about his early days, I was wondering what's the circulation now as compared to when I don't first know exactly did. what the circulation is. Don't you read the prior arbiter stemma? It's 1700. The last yeah. circulation was 1700. Yeah. By the way, you have these points there in the, oh, you want it here. Yeah, it's 1700, but it was not sufficient enough because we only charged $7 a year. And the, the expenses for printing and mailing are twice as much. And we couldn't charge more because many of our readers couldn't afford to pay more. So this is the reason My why... My observation is this, you know, there was all kinds of libertarian, there were anarchist publications, Italian, Spanish, other languages. But they gave up, you know, they gave up the ship. The Jews are a stubborn lot, you know. So he said, I kept it going, you know, now finally the language is passing away, so they have that's, that's my observation. I think I'm right. It's a sad day for you. Huh? It's a sad day for you, the closing. It's not a sad day, you know. It, you look at all these books, you know, how idealistic they were to put the books out. The gospel, what you might call, you know. And uh, it's a different age you live in. You think? Are those ideas still, I mean, still important to you? Do you, do you think they're the as realistic are, the, as when you... The idea, those ideas have been going on God knows how long, you know. Don't, don't, uh, don't take me that I say God knows that I believe there is a big boss with long beard and side locks, you know. What do you want from me? Don't, don't walk because she has to walk away from you. <laughs> but uh, are you still as idealistic as you were when you first read the Friar British? You have to be idealistic, otherwise you might as well take a gun and blow your brains out, you know. Nicht such mich wut, die Mirten grünen, du findest mich dort nicht, mein Schatz. Die Lebenswelten bei Maschinen, dort ist ein Ruheplatz, dort Such a hole, if I go. 
mich dort nicht, mein Schatz. Ich klaff wie nir, wie Ketten klingen. Dort nicht, mein Ruheplatz. Dort to go, and in the last minute he says, I don't feel well, in a whole and Paul Average is going to be here before one o'clock, he couldn't make it earlier, so we'll have to wait a little for him. The Jewish anarchists, besides uh, starting the, the Fire were very much interested in other things, they were very much for cooperatives for building cooperatives, for the unions. They were very active in the unions. The first anarchists that I believe were uh, leaders of the, uh, of the leaders. As a matter of fact, we had uh, even one that was with the president who was uh, of the um, ILGWU who was an anarchist. And therefore we were able to exist because we were interested in labor unions, we were interested in cooperatives, and we were very active there. And we expressing ourselves in the Freie Arbeitsstimme was our paper that we could propagate with it. That's what the, the important thing is, why. And naturally, if I could sell the paper, it was propaganda. My early youth, I hung on the fringe of the communists, and when I saw a few of their deals personally, I, I said, not for me. And then through another friend, I came to these people and I was with them all the time, ever since, and that was in my 20s. I've been with them a good 50 years. Their philosophy, their thinking, their dealing, one with the other, their concern for each other. There's at least a little thread of humanity, not for the purpose of what's dictated from above. Anarchism is a philosophy which rejects all forms of government. It's the only radical movement, communism, socialism, although the communists and socialists ultimately also reject government, but it's the only radical movement which wants to get rid of the government right now. Freedom now is an anarchistic slogan, to abolish the state. The anarchists see the state and the church as the twin evils of oppression in modern society. In addition to opposing the state and wanting to abolish or do away with the state, all anarchists believe in a decentralized form of society. They saw the great trends of the 1920th century seem to be, at least superficially, towards more and more centralization, great hierarchies where the individual was losing his, his sense of individuality and his power to the state, both economic and political. Well, the anarchists were individualists, they were federalists in advocating a loose-knit, decentralized society, they were anti-statists, they were anti-militarists, passionately against warfare, preaching love and brotherhood rather than hatred and war. Well, most of the people who founded the Freie Arbeitsstimme and were active in the Freie Arbeitsstimme and supported it continuously until the very end were people of the needle trades. The same people who were also active in organizing the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, the Amalgamated Clothing Workers Union, the Millinery Workers, the Pocket Workers, the uh, uh, four-year workers.